This presentation is an overview of different mixing technologies available to meet various mixing needs. The first thing we need to consider is that the technologies differ from application to application. You can see on this picture three different types of mixers used domestically, which have different types of technology in order to achieve their mixing function. You can also see from the small video how a standard agitator can be changed for a rotary jet mixer. Looking at an online definition of mixing, it can be interpreted either as a method of combining all blending ingredients into one mass or mixture, to create or form by combining ingredients, or to add an ingredient or element to another. Information from the handbook on industrial mixing, it was estimated in 1989 that for the chemical industry applications in the USA, poor mixing was contributing to an estimated cost to the industry of 1 to 10 billion US dollars per year. In one large multinational chemical company, lost value due to poor mixing was estimated at around 100 million per year in 1993. Yield losses of 5% due to poor mixing are very, very typical within the industry. Poor mixing in the pharmaceutical industry is even more critical due to the value of the products that are being manufactured. It could be estimated that the cost due to low yield could be in the order of 100 million US dollars, scale up and process development in the order of 500 million dollars, and loss opportunities where mixing problems prevent new products from ever reaching the market are very difficult to quantify. These are just some of the reasons why good mixing is important. Mixing could really be considered as a generic term for any of the following operations. These include agitating, blending, dissolving, dispersing, emulsifying and hydrating. The type of operation used is dependent on the products to be joined or mixed and also the speed at which these two parts are needed to be mixed. Mixing is also used to achieve a process result, for example, to keep a product in a homogeneous state, to enhance heat and mass transfer, and to promote chemical and biological reactions. When it comes to mixing tasks, the amount of agitation required can be related to the viscosity of the product. This will then dictate the pumping rate. This is normally around about 0.5 tank turnovers per minute for gentle mixing but as you can see from the chart the viscosity of the liquid has a very distinct effect on the number of tank turnovers and therefore dictates the speed and pumping rate for agitation. For more demanding applications where we are trying to mix say an immiscible liquid such as oil and water the agitation intensity will be extremely high and dependent on the droplet distribution required may mean very high shear mixing requirement. In an application where we are trying to keep non-soluble solids and liquids together and the agitation intensity depends very much on the solid density in relationship to the liquid. In these instances like particles need to be drawn down and heavy particles need to be lifted up and those of the same density need to be keep, kept homogeneously mixed. This is where the design of the impeller and agitator is very very important. When it comes to mixing soluble solids into liquids the agitation intensity can vary depending on the media sensitivity and the efficiency requirement of the process. The dissolution of the solids depends on their property and solubility. For the heat transmission through different fluids typically the agitation intensity will be medium to high again depending on media sensitivity and the efficiency requirement for the process. It is not just the product that influences the <coughs> mixing process other considerations are the tank relating to the tank shape, the tank volume, 
the mixer position and baffles if they are fitted and also very importantly the mixer type the configuration and speed this can affect formation of vortexes determines the amount of shear that the process is seeing and consequently has an effect on the viscosity of shear sensitive fluids the media being used in the process also has a big influence on the type of mixing viscosity and density if the product is miscible or immiscible any aggregation form addition of solids liquids and gases and this will decide the duty of the process other considerations relating specifically to the product is its behavior if it is a foaming Newtonian or non-Newtonian fluid and if it has shear sensitivity this decides the maximum intensity of the mixing process finally if the unit is required to be sterile or non-sterile will affect the design and the chemical properties of the fluids and or solids being pumped will affect the materials of the agitator or mixer as we identified on previous slides the duty influences whether blending dispersion dissolution partial suspension gas dispersion or heat transfer is required this then decides the minimum intensity and mixer configuration for a given tank because of the variation in mixing tasks it is realistically impossible to have one mixer that will do everything therefore there are a number of different types of mixing equipment available to ensure that these tasks can be carried out satisfactory these include agitators magnetic mixers jet mixers and high shear mixers first we will briefly look at agitators these consists of an impeller fitted to a shaft the shaft in turn is either driven directly by a motor or via a reduction gearbox because of the variety of tasks that the agitators may be required to do the type of tank and tank geometry required may mean that the unit can be mounted either in the top of the tank sometimes due to the length of the tank these may be top mounted with a bottom support alternatively they can be mounted in the bottom of the tank or on the side of the tank again positioned to suit the application when we begin to look at the impeller types for agitators these can be broken down into three main types number one the radial flow impeller number two the axial flow impeller and number three the close clearance impeller this small sketch is showing the flow pumping pattern for the radial impellers as their name indicates these mix or agitate in a radial pattern these are quite often used on low viscosity liquids in baffled tanks and sometimes a disc turbine can be used for gas dispersion here you can see a number of different types of radial impellers again the amount of blades their position and the angle they have give different mixing effects and patterns within the fluid here we see other examples of radial type impellers the blades angled or curved to achieve different mixing effects Here are two typical examples of axial flow impellers, the pitch blade turbine and the propeller impeller. These are very common in a lot of applications. Here we can see the examples of the hydrofoil impellers. These are again axial flow impellers, but you can see the blades are angled or curved and can be used for either down or up pumping as required. Here again you can see the basic comparison between the axial flow and the radial flow impeller. We have not shown the pattern for close tolerance impellers. These are inherently wipers of concentrating most of their effort on removing products from the side of the tank.
Here is an indication of two of the most important of those dimensionless numbers. This is the Reynolds number, which is relative to, to the power number, and depending on the impeller type and configuration, this will determine the power consumption and torque required. A high power number gives a large torque and therefore expensive shaft, gearbox and motor size and therefore high operating costs. When it comes to impellers, uh, the highly efficient Ensafoil uh, propeller has a very very good ratio of pumping number to power number in the region of 2.6. Normally for examples of propeller agitators this is really normally around about 0.6. This means high pumping at low energy consumption compared to other impellers of the same diameter operated at the same rotational speed. And this can be very efficient in applications primarily governed by flow like keeping a media homogeneous. So the question is which impeller to choose? For flow governed applications choose an impeller with a high flow number over a power number i.e. ensofoil. For mixing in tanks where no gas burst is required, choose a low power number, again, like the Ensafoil. Mixing in tall tanks with no gas dispersion, choose an axial flow impeller, either an up pumper or a down pumper, again, like the Ensafoil. And mixing in gas dispersion in a tall tank, use modern radial flow impellers as the low impeller for gas dispersion in combination with axial flow hydrofoil impellers as upper impellers or use an up pumping hydrofoil. We spent some time looking at agitators. I'd just like to make you aware of other types of mixers that are available on the market. First, we move on to the magnetic mixer. These mixers are extremely suitable for applications that require mixing down to very low levels. Also, for applications where it is important that there is no mechanical seal or leakage method to the outside of the tank. As this is not fitted with a mechanical seal, it is ideal for this type of application. If we look at the construction of this unit, first we have a weld plate. This is welded into the tank. Then we have on top of this a mail bearing. On top of this then the impeller is put. This is fitted with magnets in the body and finally the magnetic drive is pushed from underneath. The magnets in the drive and the magnets in the impeller cause the impeller to rotate due to the magnetic attraction, but there is no physical contact between the impeller and the motor. With these type of mixers they are put in an offset position, normally in the bottom of the vessel. Uh, this eliminates need for any baffles for low viscosity applications and the mixer, because of its position and impeller type gives both ra some radial and axial flow. Typically it is bottom mounted for most applications. With magnetic impellers there are two distinct types. There is the non-levitated impeller and the levitated impeller. Here on this video it just shows the benefits of the levitated impeller as there is no contact at all between the impeller and the bearing. Here we just see a brief overview of the differences between the impeller levitation. A non-levitated impeller has no mechanical seals, can mix down to very low volumes and is bottom mounted. With the levitated impeller you have the same benefits as the non-levitated but with the addition it can mix down to the last drop, is fully drainable, is completely CIP cleanable, gives minimal wear and very gentle product treatment. The last of the trilogy of mixing technologies we're going to look at is the jet mixers. These rely on the use of a jet or a stream of liquid injected at high velocity into the bulk liquid. There is typically achieved with an external recirculation pump. Jet mixers are used in tanks, tubes and pipes and by some are seen as an advancement on the standard propeller agitators. There are three types of jet mixers available on the market. They are radial, axial and rotary. Rotary is perceived to be the best technology as the mixing patterns of the radial and the axial jet mixers will sometimes have the potential for poorly mixed zones. This small video is showing how 
the isomix can be used in a recirculation loop. The fluid to be mixed is introduced into the top of the tank and into the mixing machine. Then the dispersion is very quick and very simple by means of the rotating jet heads. The processes the jet mixer can be used for can be liquid mixing, gas dispersion, deaeration, carbonation, can be used in conjunction with a high shear mixer for powder mixing and last but not least can be used for tank cleaning and CIP. All same uses with one unit. Here we see a very quick example of how the introduction of gas into a liquid can be achieved. The mixing is very very, very small bubbles and therefore the dissipation of these within the liquid is very very quick. As we said in previous slides this is a dual function unit which can not only mix your product but can clean the tank afterwards. Here is a good example of the cleaning rotation within the tank. You can see the jets are hitting the side of the tank and therefore producing good and fast cleaning. Here we can see an example that using a rotary jet head as opposed to a stationary jet head in a more viscous fluid is going to give you better fluid dissipation and mixing. The static unit is likely to give stagnant areas and therefore the mixing of the two fluids will take considerably longer compared to that of a rotary jet head. Here are just some conclusions with regard to rotary jet mixers. Even with low viscosity liquids there is a positive effect on having head rotation. Under transitional conditions which we are likely to have in high viscosity fluids i.e. in personal care the effect of rotation is very large. It's much better to add feed in the loop than to the tank top and the addition of powder should also be performed in the loop. This will give you a much better dissipation. Fine bubbles are generated by the rotary jet head, therefore gassing of fluids is much more efficient. And last but not least, the rotary jet head is ideal for CIP between batches. Thank you very much.